Okay. I'm getting a haircut Monday, so... Everybody say goodbye to the long hair. I'm definitely gonna miss it. What's up, gamers? Welcome to another epic video. And today, we're gonna be talking about the importance of remembering your roots. Oh boy, this is gonna be just a nostalgic trip, isn't it? So, what is someone's roots? Well, I would define someone's roots to the media that they were exposed to at a very young age that influences who they are today. The topic of someone's roots is actually really interesting because, granted, you'll probably have some of the same roots that I do. But the reason I'm saying it's so important to remember your roots isn't just because I'm a big believer in nostalgia and I'm a very emotional person. It's because of the simple fact that if you don't remember your roots, you'll lose sight of your personality. Oftentimes, if you feel lost, remembering your roots can kind of give yourself a reality check. And it also feels kind of nice to uh, remember stuff that happened a long time ago. The biggest thing that set off this chain reaction of nostalgia for me was last December when I got an Amazon free trial to watch Doctor Who. Doctor Who is a TV show I last watched at that time when I was in 2017, 14, 13, 14, when I was 11, 11, and I've been watching it since I was six. It's definitely a big part of my personality. I remember sharing moments every Saturday watching it with my family and waiting for the episodes to air during the Matt Smith era and being involved in every episode and going back and re-watching all of those episodes really brought back a lot of nice memories. That's when I realized that nostalgia was one of my favorite things to feel. Because oftentimes nostalgia is linked to family and friends and remembering that stuff can kind of make you feel good. God, this is already a soppy episode. Episode. I wanted to speak some real wisdom this time, but I thought I'd be able to just say it when I turn the camera on, but I got nothing. I might have to write a script. Eh, screw it. Let's wing it. Let me fix my hair first. Then we'll wing it. So after that, and I established that very particular character personality, character trait, rather, for me, um, we continue on, and... The next thing I realized, and I, if I have my phone, I can document exactly when this happened. Where's my phone? It's on my table. Oh, hey. Spooderman. We're about to talk about him. Yes. Yes. Well, I don't know how far back it is. Probably not that far back. <laughs> there it is. September 18th, 2017. 18 <laughs> was when I first finally rediscovered the Raimi films. I can't believe I forgot that these existed, and rewatching them was. Been, is it raining? It's raining. It was just phenomenal. The last time I watched them was when I was like eight. God, my hair's a mess. Anyway, continue on. Moving swiftly onward. Um, I'd recently been watching a YouTuber, High Top Films, who does a lot of, uh, reviews on Spider-Man movies, and he did a very popular video on why Spider-Man Homecoming is a bad Spider-Man movie, which I take to heart, and I realized that me and High Top Films are pretty much the same person, and, uh, that in combination with, uh, Spider-Man PS4 releasing later that, earlier that, hang on. Spider-Man PS4 release date. Earlier that month, sorry, set off the most remarkable chain reaction I think I've ever experienced in my life. And all of a sudden, glorious, gooey memories flooded back into my mind, and I just 
felt nothing but warm feelings for the Spider-Man movies and reinvigorated my faith in the superhero known as Spider-Man. I really hated MCU's version of Peter Parker and, I guess, Spider-Man. And seeing these movies, I'm pointing over there because there's a Spider-Man poster, kind of gave me more faith and let me remember when Spider-Man was actually pretty well written. I think Sam Raimi was a director genius. Alexa, I didn't call you. Yeah, no. <clears throat> Regardless, um, following months, I became very uh, attached to the character of Spider-Man. Uh, I'm an artist, if you guys didn't know, and I draw a lot of what's on my mind. And I have uh, pictures on my wall of Spider-Man from that time, and I have posters now. I'm getting more posters to put on my door. But, anyways, that being said, Spider-Man is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I can't believe I forgot it existed as soon as it did. It was just like, I became reborn. It was the most fascinating thing. And this can't really happen with TV shows, because another great example is Adventure Time. Recently, last year, I figured out that Adventure Time had ended. And hearing that, it was like a family member died, because I remember when I was... Eight years old watching Adventure Time back when it first aired on Cartoon Network and then I just kind of went on a uh, spree not a spree a uh, expedition through Adventure Time episodes I actually have a playlist in Spotify called the greatest memories and it's full of Adventure Time music so it's always nice, especially when um, you feel so connected to a piece of media that it's like someone dies, which is usually when media is most effective, is that you actually feel something in real life when it ends, which happens a lot for stuff like Breaking Bad, Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, which is definitely something I felt when it ended last, last year. That being said... It is so fascinating the way trends work in our society because as soon as something isn't popular, it dies out. And as soon as something happens that's like extremely like revolutionary, like a new Muppets movie coming out in 2011 when you haven't seen anything from the Muppet characters in like a decade, and then all of a sudden everybody's talking about the Muppets, and then nowadays, where's the Muppets? There's no Muppet movies anymore. It is so fascinating, and nostalgia is also kind of a way of bookmarking history because um, these things, things that make you nostalgic and sad and longing for the past are things that are turning points for your character as a human being, right? So when you acknowledge something is nostalgic, it really is nostalgic. And you're feeling something real. And, I mean, we're all human, so, I mean, it's not unnatural to be sad when you miss something. I mean. <clears throat> I think nostalgia is great. I mean, I like to be sad. It's important to be sad as a human being because if you were happy all the time you just go crazy you gotta like let it out sometimes so nostalgia is kind of like nature's way of letting your emotions go sometimes especially when you're living as long as human beings do you can that's what a midlife crisis is if you didn't know it's literally just nostalgia taking over and making you feel hopelessly longing for the past and realizing that you're like old and I'm 15, so I guess I'm not really the most reliable source to talk about nostalgia, but I, 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 I don't know. I just kind of felt like talking about it, so listen to me ramble. We're going to move on to video games now, which is probably the uh, most nostalgic thing for me. The first thing we're going to cover is The Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda was the first video game I ever played, and revisiting it in 2017 was definitely a... Uh, a great moment for my channel and we played through it and I meant to go back and finish Majora's Mask but I never did. I don't know where my Wii U is. I I promise 
if you guys want it. I really want to finish it just for my own sake. But I, I'd have to find the Wii U again. I just got off topic again. Um, Zelda. Zelda is so unfathomably ancient that you almost can't believe it. My parents played this game when they were young, you understand? Not when they were young. It came out, like, in 98. But um, they played it, and then when I was born in 2003, I was literally raised on it. I learned to read from the game, as my father has told me. Uh, which is just appalling that video games can have that kind of impact, which goes to show that, I mean, it's not just a video game, it's... It can be incredibly influential on, like, culture. Uh, so it's just a, a message to, like, the haters. Like, all video games are the same. Frick you. <laughs> Keep it PG, laddies. Continuing on. This is a pocket watch my friend gave me a couple days ago. Thanks, Dylan. Um, this part of the video is probably mostly unedited. I probably did hyper editing at the beginning and then I got lazy in the uh, finishing. I'm gonna continue. We're gonna go on to uh, next game, Minecraft. Oh my god, I recently got a huge uh, uh, interesting moment with Minecraft by watching this video, a tribute to Minecraft, which apparently came out a long time ago and I never saw it. It is a f fabulous video. I wish I could show it, but I have a habit with showing whole videos in my videos, so I'll just, I'll tone it down, I'll put the link in the description, definitely, please go watch it, it is one of the most beautiful creations I've ever seen, uh, Minecraft is probably one of the most influential parts of my character, I remember growing, literally growing up on the game, like, the second it came out, it was like, Minecraft enslaved the world, and it definitely didn't hold back for any of uh, my friends, I, I feel like I definitely respect the game, that's a, that's a thing that I do a lot, I, like, I'm, because I'm so nostalgic all the time, uh, I tend to respect Roots, which should go to show, uh, uh, which, I, I think it's nice to do that for people, it gives me a, empathy points, I guess, this is becoming about me, guys, uh, what on earth? Anyway, uh, back on topic. Minecraft. Minecraft. Um, this was probably one of the biggest, uh, phenomenons for YouTube, uh, to ever happen. It's what brought gaming into the mainstream for, and to become one of the most popular categories on YouTube. Minecraft did that, which should, you know, round of applause for Minecraft for doing something impossible. Uh, in 2011, I got it on my dad's computer, and I remember faint, faint memories of playing on servers, um, and, uh, I remember making skins and skin seed apps, and I remember playing with my friends on New Year's Eve, and I remember watching, like, Sky Does Minecraft and popular MMOs, all these weird, weird people, <laughs> like, strange people that somehow found, uh, success through Minecraft. It's beyond mind-boggling to know that something can have that kind of impact and to be a, an active member of it, no less, uh, which is something that I want to, uh, strive for YouTube, in YouTube, specifically. Uh, moving swiftly onward past Minecraft, one of the biggest hurdles for me. Um, the next influential game I would say is... I can't remember what I was going to say. I will be back when I remember what I was going to say. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Five Nights at Freddy's. Lord, have mercy on my soul. This game obsessed me. Absolutely obsess me. You know who got me into it? Dylan got me into it. That's who got me into it. Dylan showed me a Markiplier video, and that's what got me into Markiplier. Finders Freddy's got me into Markiplier, and Dylan got me into uh, Five Minutes of Freddy's, so Dylan got me into Markiplier. Fun fact. 
Um, Five Nights at Freddy's was an indie phenomenon to the same degree as Minecraft, I would say. I feel like people have more respect for Minecraft just because, because most people of my generation were, like, kids when they came out. And then uh, the community went and ruined Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the... Uh, definitely one of the greatest games ever made, I would I would say. I... <laughs> I'm being so controversial. If you don't like Five Nights at Freddy's, no biggie, man. I don't. I don't care. I've moved past it, but definitely it was one of the, the biggest things in my life when it came out, and uh, apparently it's still happening. There's a movie coming out. It is strange. It was. It's a dead part of culture now, so it's going to be disappointing when the box office results for that movie come in. But, I mean, I don't know, maybe the Muppets will happen to Five Nights at Freddy's, and then all of a sudden it'll come back into the mainstream again. I highly doubt that, though. It's kind of died out. <sighs> it is so... unbelievably unreal and borderline magical. <sighs> How this stuff happens like how trends happen which like slippery slopes sort of into nostalgia and then that slippery slopes into uh uh part of people's culture and lifestyles uh it is so incredible i've been going on for 20 minutes here i should probably wrap my thoughts up Nostalgia is so important, like, I can't even stress it. If you think being sad is dumb, you got another thing coming. Because being sad is the most important emotion you can feel because it gives not only film characters depth, but also real-life characters. So, if you're afraid, not afraid, uh, if you're, like, nervous to uh not nervous um if you're just like whatever that's probably the best way to say it about um embracing some of that stuff of your culture because it's a part of who you are and you just can't ignore that because we can't help who we are and i mean it goes without saying i should say um so I guess that's about everything for me. If you uh, want to know anything about me, I'm getting my hair cut, like I said. Um, I'm watching Spectacular Spider-Man right now, and I just ordered some comic books. I want to become a pro at Spider-Man and be able to make professional Spider-Man videos, film videos. I'm also hyper-studying some of the most popular films to also get some uh, experience on uh, film theory. I don't know if I want to do a major in film if I ever go to college. I, I think it would definitely be fun and interesting. Uh, and I would definitely be interested in it. But I don't know if that might be something I want to do. I definitely want to be in film. I think film is incredible. And it can make people feel something. And I feel like that's what I want to do. If I was ever going to make an impact in the world, I would want it to be through emotion. Uh, and film is probably one of the easiest ways to convey emotion. Because it's a very straightforward uh, relay of information, but yet so complex at the same time. Uh, what else is there to say? I got new glasses. They're too big to fit in my face, but they're over there. Uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you ever catch me in public, I'm probably watching like the Garrett Studios videos or watching Spider-Man 2. Because I like, love, adore Spider-Man 2. And you should too. It's a great movie. You can say it's not the best movie. You can even say it's not the best superhero movie. But you can't, you can't lie to me and say that it's a bad movie. Alright. It is definitely a great movie at worst. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. Bye, guys. And remember, <laughs> stay gamer. <laughs> Bye.